uh, North Carolina Waterfront Neighborhood Council versus our, uh, our meeting. This is occurring March 13th for the record. Um, I'd like to just note that Matt Conti of North and Waterfront.com will be uh, videotaping tonight's meeting. Expect Phil Orlando of the regional review to be here as well. And uh, we just have the attorney Piscano setting up for his portion later, so don't mind his noises over there or not. But, um, is there anyone else from uh, local media or anybody else that wants to? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Lily Pina, and I'm from the DMU service, and I'm covering the dark end uh, this semester. So. I'll be around. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I can just start the roll call. Go well. Al Baraki. Al George Mendoza. George Mendoza. John Bregman. Michael Benetti. Daniel Ambrosio. Carmen Guarino. John Hennessy. Thank you. And, uh, yep. So the meeting will be conducted according to parliamentary rules. The president will have the final word of the conduct of the meeting. I will cast a vote only in the event the rest of the council reaches the tie. The president will recognize a speaker to make their presentation or statement, and then he will commit the council to ask questions. He will then open the floor to questions from the audience, and each audience member should introduce themselves by name and street address. No person will speak until they have been recognized by the president. All speakers will be confined to the time limits. Voting will be done by ballot, and the results of all votes will be announced at the conclusion. And just a few things to report. You may have seen a flyer. It is a couple more here regarding the fireworks. Friends of uh, Christopher Columbus Park reached out to me. Um, we may have all seen that the New Year celebration didn't occur as it normally did on the, on the harbor. So they are uh, looking into maybe bringing it back. And she just asked me to provide some information about that. So if you have any questions about that, certainly see me after the meeting or, or contact uh, Joanne directly. Uh, but that's just a little, a little something I wanted to put out there. And then you'll note on the agenda, Boston Shines is number eight. They unfortunately couldn't be here because uh, the city was shut down for this uh, rainstorm that we had a couple of inches, I guess. But uh, in any case, they're going to come to a future meeting. So that being said, I can move on to the committee reports and ask Danielle if she can provide us with the rest of the parking chat. Um, so quick update on snow emergency parking. Um, Hopefully we don't have to worry about it again, but uh, when there's a parking ban, North End residents can park uh, discounted at Lafayette Garage. Um, it's $10 for every 24 hours. You can't move in and out when you get charged again. Um, you have to be out within top two hours of the ban being lifted. Um, and then quickly, I'm going to pass around a petition uh, for the resident parking pilot program. Uh, that we've discussed in the past. So I've talked to Salo Matina and Commissioner Fiendaka from the Boston Transportation Department, and they've, they're in support of implementing an ordinance that will raise fines from $40 to $100 uh, from two hours before um, until two hours after any game, event, or concert night at City Hall Plaza or TV Garden. Um, there was, in, in that, um, if you sign, if you're in support, that would be great. And then the last two pages are actually uh, excerpts from when the ordinance, the pilot program was put into effect, and the ordinance was actually officially signed. Um, and there was huge success in Fenway with a very similar program. So we're hoping that this will be successful too. Great, thank you. So I'll pass it around and if you want to point. Can I ask a quick question, though? Yes. Yeah. We do it there. Yeah, you do it our feast toast as well add it when it's We can absolutely add that. So uh, if you have any suggestions and I'll add that as one of them, well, I, I think that would be that would be very it would be very helpful to have that. And I'll submit that with the petition. Great, thank you. Good work with that. Um, we do not have a public safety committee report for this month, so I'll just offer a brief Greenway Committee report. Uh, the gala is on June 8th, so they wanted to uh, remind us all that, that that's coming up again. Uh, this Saturday to Monday, the holiday, is Experience Kissimmee on the Greenway. They have a zip line. There's going to be alligators and other things like that to get us, I guess, in the Florida mood since all this snow is really uh, making us too winter. But, uh, but be sure to visit down there. And then uh, speaking of uh, the snow, when uh, BPS issues a snow day, as they did today and like Friday and Thursday of last week, uh, the Greenway has plenty of events that they welcome their families and the kids to go down and, and build snowmen and, and otherwise have fun on the way out. So uh, if any more come, which hopefully they don't, but if they do, be sure to check that out. So then I know we have some uh, some of our local elected officials here and some may come, but uh, I'll just start. If I can wait. Okay. Uh, Maria Lange. 
my cabinet of civic engagement had to cancel tonight but just a little briefing on what she's going to talk about so boston shines our annual spring cleanup has been very successful um, we are now re-announcing boston shines this is going to be turned into the love your block initiative and so love your block will be about promoting neighborhood revitalization and we'll also be doing year-round cleanups along with the big cleanup in the spring this year the north end uh, cleanup weekend is april 28th to april 30th and you can start you could start registering on february 6th if you go to boston.gov backslash love your block so there's a lot of faces in the room i hope to see you all this spring um and for more information on that like i said boston.gov backslash love your block. um one other announcement that came out about two weeks ago um uh, ma'am Jay walsh in partnership with the boston red sox youth foundation has designated certain community centers around the city to receive a batting cage and the desire center is luckily one of those centers. so the batting cage will be installed in the next six months hopefully it'll be upstairs in the gym and the way it'll work is it'll attach to the ceiling and then pop down to be used and then go right back up so that other basketball games or other activities up in the gym can take place so we're really excited about this we're about only um four other community centers that received one so look forward to having that rolled out in the next six months and then lastly just an update from imagine boston imagine boston's holding a listening session on thursday february 16th from 6 30 to 8 o'clock p.m about imagining franklin park and how we could better connect franklin park to our community a fun fact franklin park is actually the center of the city of boston and most people don't know that you know we're so involved with downtown we can't really see that far <laughs> out but it is good to think about a place like franklin park and how we could use it for our benefit as well even traveling across the city and so like i said that's thursday february 16th at 6 30 p.m at the franklin golf franklin park golf course function room <coughs> on circuit drive in roxbury that's it also just thank you all for your compliance over the past couple of days with the snow emergencies and um, i saw a lot of good neighbors out shoveling their sidewalks and ramps and hydrants and we really do appreciate it as we try to make sure the streets are clean as well thank you Hi, Hi, I'm Luigi Natale from Senator Joseph Boncoy's office. Um, we have no new updates, but if anyone ever needs anything, please don't hesitate to call our office. I'm the liaison of the North End, and uh, thank you. And I know we have uh, Patrick Lyons here for his uh, representative Mike Lewis's office, but did you have anything else? Uh, I'll let him. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Oh, go ahead. I was, uh, how are you? I don't really have a lot of here to listen tonight. Um, not next week, but the week after, we're going to have a hearing on the city council. Uh, a very interesting hearing. Five of us went to Denver a couple of weeks ago. Um, as you know, uh, marijuana is now legal in Massachusetts. And uh, so we went to study recreational marijuana and how um, Denver is dealing with that since then first major city to um, deal with um, recreational marijuana. So we're going to have a hearing probably two weeks from Thursday uh, just to talk about our findings. Um, very interesting. Um, in Boston right now we have medical marijuana. I believe there's one facility on Milk Street, but we have a zoning in place which is a half a mile. So you can lo locate another uh, facility within the half a mile. Um, interestingly, in Denver, they thought that was very restricted. So we will have a hearing on that. If you want to come and attend, please feel free. Thank you. Thanks for being late. Um, my name is Alana Olson. I work for Councillor Anissa Tavi George. And it was great to, I think I came in at the perfect moment to hear from Councillor Lamatina and Representative Michael Woods, both of whom are working on interesting issues. Um, the councillor was in Denver uh, with Councillor Lamatina. She was knitting and, you know, being very motherly the whole trip. Um, and I know that as the chair of the Committee on Homelessness, Mental Health and Recovery, she's going to be really interested to work with Representative Michael Woods and support his effort on the second piece of legislation he talked about um, and also on the housing issues that all of you are facing in the downtown neighborhoods, especially around the Airbnb stuff. So it was nice to see all of you. Hello. Thank you.
Bye.